Welcome to this short video on how to engage with the developer community if you are into bioimage analysis and using Python. Um, what you're going to hear is audio that was recorded in December 2019 as part of the first Python for bioimage analysis course that we held in Cambridge. Um, I've tried to synchronize it up with um, appropriate websites so that there's visual to the audio as well. Though, because I made this video several months after it was originally record recorded, some things don't quite exist in the way they did then, so they might look a bit different. Um, treat the visual aids as an aid to give you an idea of what things look like, um, but the audio is was correct at the time. Uh, I apologise if it goes out of sync ever, uh, at all at any point as well. Um, okay, well, without any ado, I'll transfer us over to me. So yeah, I said that I managed to find bits that were broken while I was trying to prepare the materials for this course and created issues. A lot of the experimental patches that you might play with developed by other groups around the world are probably going to be hosted on GitHub or something similar. There's a thing called Bitbucket and there's a system called GitLab as well. Um, and, but they all have similar sort of uh, a similar sort of arrangement. So probably the key thing here is this is a user called ImageJ, and there's a variety of packages, and we were talking about PyImageJ. In here, you can easily find out who's been contributing. Uh, that's kind of useful if uh, you happen to know one of them, so you can just drop them an email and tell them they've done everything wrong. Um, you can see what are called commits. So each commit is an update that someone's made to that package. So it's a new bit of code, a new function. And if you were to click on this, you'll see what it's meant to have done. Um, so bump to next development cycle, release this version, add this, so on and so forth, and who did it. Uh, you can also see that there are branches. In this case, there's only one called master. We can ignore about it. But sometimes you'll see developmental branches, which might be applicable to you. And probably what's also quite nice is if they're doing their project management well, they should be using releases. Um, and these releases are kind of the official chunks, the official versions that are ready for users. So although uh, PyImageJ is actually technically on version 0.6, uh, version 0.5 is the one that's been released. So it's the one that's stable and not going to break, in theory. <laughs> uh, and then the final thing that these sorts of systems have is some sort of issue. Uh, system. I'm actually going to show you all the issues. So issues can be posted by pretty much anyone with GitHub and Bitbucket and GitLab. You do need an account, but if you don't already have a GitHub account, I would strongly recommend that you create one or, or your Git-based repository service of choice. Um, and the key thing about issues is they're a useful place to A, raise something that doesn't work, but they're often also a very useful place to get help. I'm going to talk about another place to get help in a second. So for example, you can see that 22 days ago when I was writing these materials originally, I created two issues because I realized their system didn't work. Um, let's pick this one. This is a relatively small issue. Uh, turns out that ImageJ server, which as I say, I think I prefer, prefer actually isn't installed when you install this package into Conda. Um, so I told them what I tried. So, so this is kind of a point about good practice when you're talking to a developer through something like an image. I told them, I've, get, I've, used, I've searched the issues already, and I've found nothing that relates to this, this issue. I've tried to give an, as informative and complete a name as possible. ImageJ.server, that should say not installed by Conda. Uh, I'm quite good at creating typos. I've then given them actually a relatively long response. Uh, as to what's going on, uh, what version of the package that I have, that's really important. Um, in general, you should also put the version of any other packages related that you have. So if you're talking about PyImageJ and you're loading a local version of Fiji from PyImageJ, don't just say I've got PyImageJ 0.5.0, say I've got PyImageJ 0.5.0 and I'm loading Fiji version 2.0.0. If you're talking about something to do with ImageJ not working with another package, sorry, PyImageJ not working with another package, then put the version of that other package as well. Also make it clear, this is less of an issue, but it's still good practice to make it clear what version of Python you're on, which I didn't do in this case, but I did say um, that I think, well, I didn't. 
I should have said, said that I was using the latest version of uh, Conda, which would have given them that information. They then got back to me and said, thanks for the report. Turns out it was, it was a, a silly mistake in this case. It wasn't picked up by the automatic packaging thing. Uh, and that they're going to fix it at some point. They also, it's useful to realize that GitHub has these things called milestones. And they're kind of, they can be quite useful to look at if your favorite package doesn't quite do what you want, to do, want it to do yet. You create an issue and they add it to a milestone. You can see they have some issues in this particular group. They have some issues in the unscheduled milestone, not very helpful, but they have an issue in the version 1.0 milestone. So I know now that when uh, when they make this code stable at version 1.0, actually I think both of my issues have been fixed. This issue and this other issue, which was um, what was causing the blur not to actually show up as a blur. Um, I think as well, it's a really useful place to find solutions to problems. So let's take, does anyone have a problem that they've recently had in image J? that they want to see if we can find a live solution to. And this is dangerous because it could go very wrong. No? Okay, let's go with, uh, let's just say we've got something, it's a plugin and the window is not loaded. If you go onto the GitHub for MHJ and the issues and search windows not loaded, you will find, excellent, a couple of examples where people have had problems with windows not lo loading. Now one of these has been closed, I've got this big red I don't know, yeah, I don't know why closed is red. Closed is a good thing, it means it's been dealt with. Um, so it might happen that you open this one, it's got 27 comments, you read through it and you find out that in this case, um, a Java package wasn't being properly bundled, so if you download the latest version, that's been fixed. In this case, uh, it's a huge image by the sound of it. <laughs> That's very large. I think if you read this thread, you'll get, you'll see the image data developers saying, that's far too large. Open it with something else, such as saving it as an HTS5 format and using big picture. Let's see if they do say something useful like that. Uh, I, I mean, that is a very large image, a uh, very big image for a triangle, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So if you scroll down, they've given some examples of what they've tried. They've said it opens on in other software. Oh, I've accidentally pressed the button. They've dumped the error messages. So when you're working with Python, you get that trace back that I'm sure you've all seen by now, that chunk of red text. That is one of the most useful things for people to see, the whole of that chunk of red text, not just the last line or the first line. That's a common mistake people make, the whole of the chunk. And then as you get down here, OK, this is good. What people will often try and do is they'll try to recreate the errors that you're, that you're seeing. And if they can recreate it, that means it's usually an error with the system and not with you. Uh, or they like to call it an error between the keyboard and the monitor. If it's uh, and then it looks like this actually is a Java issue again. So this hasn't been closed because it hasn't been fixed. But it turns out that this might actually just be a fundamental issue with the system right now. So, that's going to be how you tend to, oh, that is a useful way to be able to, to interact with developmental packages and new packages that people are publishing with papers. However, there are a couple of other sources worth mentioning. The first one is image.sc. This is a forum which actually worked with a massive number of scientific imaging packages. So all of these people are heavily involved in this this is their official forum state now. They've all moved into image.sd. So Bioformax, BernJ, CellProfessor, uh, CLIJ, Elastic, IGR, Fiji, ImageJ, ImagePy, ImageLib2, Napari, OME, Amero, OpenFim, Psyche Image, we're here, New Bias, Tupath, people might know about, SciView, people might know about. So all of the big packages and softwares that you're probably using, this is the official space, so if you don't know about it, bookmark it now. The key thing that I want to show you is they have this tag system, and there are tags for Python. It says no match is found because I'm already on it. But there is a tag for Python, I'm on it. And all of these, um, these forum posts will be a Python-related thing. They might be announcements. Like Amero announcing the fact it's going to move properly to Python 3 and it's going to work. They might be questions about image analysis. Uh, they might be specific to 
uh, a user's problem. So this is a script hangs on a macOS with external drives, uh, and that person's problem is that they're using macOS. Uh, there might be blog posts about how to do something. And you'll see when they were made, who made them, if you hover over this, and how many replies they've got. So you can search, and let's do the same search, window not loading. I think I've searched with the Python tag, so it's, oh, so I have 25 results here. You see I've got even more results here, because it's going to cover a range of things. Um, this one's a bioformats, Jython, Python, Cock up. Okay. Oh. Are you just down as D ways? That's not you. The the oh this one's you. Oh well that that's not your face. And it's someone called it's Robert Hass. Uh, so if I click I've never actually tried to go through a person before. Okay. So if you go to a person you get a summary. And you are ah, excellent. You get their top topic, topics and their top replies. So let's see how good Dominic is at replying to people <laughs> and put him on the pressure. <laughs> so someone had a question about memory not clearing over time with BIOS format and image J. Oh, you had it. You've answered your own question, have you? Excellent. So Dominic had a problem. So he, he said it, it's his own image J macro. He's told which image J version he's using. Um, he said that the images are quite big. Uh, he's said specifically the plugin that he's using, and he's described the problem. Uh, he probably should have given his operating system. Bad form, Dominic. Uh, then, oh, actually, Robert Hass has replied. Uh, so Robert Hass is quite big on Twitter, if you haven't already met him, and he's the guy who does CLIJ, right? Amongst other things. You might have also on Twitter have seen his Octospin, which is an eight-armed light sheet microscope. And he's asking for some more information. Uh, someone else wanted to community forum team members have actually given a way to inspect the memory issue on a different level. Uh, Dominic's then replied to Robert and also used the visualizer, so he's engaged with the response as well, and that's a really important thing. One of the really annoying things is when someone who's clearly quite new goes on, asks a question, you ask for some more questions back and they just never reply, and you don't know whether they solved it or not. And also, that's going to be annoying for another new person who comes along searches for that question, sees the question, and sees no answer. Uh, someone's jumped in and gone, I've got the same issue. I think it might be related to these points. And they've linked to Stack Overflow, which we've already mentioned, and another image.sc uh, post. So sometimes you will get people who are overly strict about forum rules, about whether you tag things correctly or put them in the right place. And uh, I mean, generally, just ignore them. <laughs> I mean, if they're saying something like there's a dedicated troubleshooting section, then it's a good place to go and look, and it's a good place to remember. I think the image.sc community is quite good, but the Stack Overflow community, sometimes you'll get someone who is a, just a complete bad end, and it's not your fault, it's theirs. And eventually, Dominic, do you know there's a, there's a lot of back and forth here. Do you know if you actually solved the problem? I, I think it's still ongoing. It's still ongoing, <laughs> excellent. Oh, yeah, we're at six months later here. Uh, two years later, excellent. So this seems to be quite an open problem that's not being solved yet. Uh, it says, thanks for suggesting a fix. Thanks a lot for posting it here. This is awesome. Most people just run away with a solution once it works. Them. This is true. Christian is correct. Don't run away when you get a solution. Give it a tick, upvote it, give it a heart. Say, yes, this is the solution. And thanks to the person who's trying to help you with it. Uh, if you do this, people will answer your questions again in the future. Um, it turns out it is solved. Image.sc is mostly focused on the software side. Uh, some of you in facilities might also care to know about Microforum, uh, which is focused a bit more on the hardware side. Um, uh, so you can see the categories here, hardware, probes and prep, software theory, commercial, um, and things like this. This is a lot newer. Um, but this is another space you might like to go. I'm not going to talk about it. And then finally, another one related is MicroList, which is a list of resources aimed at light microscopists primarily. But generally, it's, it's, so it's got courses, meetings, learning materials, tools. But the key point here is under techniques, there's a whole section for image analysis. And if you're interested in machine learning, a subsection. And if you click on that, uh, I, Jennifer was at a light sheet for microscopy last week, which I was also at. 
And uh, half of these were put up then. I could see her doing it. Every time someone mentioned a bit of software in a talk, it went on here. So this, uh, she's really trying very hard, along with other people, to keep this up to date. So uh, you'll see some open access textbooks. You'll see events. You'll see software. You'll see videos, Python for microscopists. That might be a useful one to have a look at. Um, and this will probably just get bigger and bigger, and I believe it should be searchable for keywords such as Python. And if you go to, say, tools, rather, well, actually, maybe let's go to learning materials. We've got three results for Python learning materials. They all happen to be use analysis related ones, so that's probably a good place to start. And then we've got, at the moment, just 12 results for tools, but I'm expecting that this will actually grow as a very useful repository for people to look at. And then finally, we've got some information about mediums. No results for Python bioimage analysis mediums. Uh, we should get on that. <laughs> um, what we should probably do is get the new bias one put on here so that if someone comes on here and doesn't go on. And then I'm pretty much finished talking, and then we can have a coffee, and then you can hear Dominic talk. But I just really wanted to point out something about, as well as being a good uh, community member on GitHub and on image.sc or Stack Overflow, whatever you're using, I wanted to point out that it's really important things. So there's a, I'll, I'll post this, uh, the link to this. This is a discussion about how you should cite or whether you should cite Python. And possibly there, there's, there's arguments on both sides. There's an old-fashioned consensus that you don't cite software. I personally think you should cite software somewhere. But even if you choose not to cite the programming language, Python, you should definitely be citing the papers for the things you use in Python. So, such as SciPy, there's now a preprint. This SciPy is actually really old, and this is the first time there's a paper for it. Um, but they've given it, it's lovely, it's in BibTech. If you don't want it in BibTech, it's written down at the top. Uh, you can feel free to check out the archive. Scikit image has a, oh, it's moved. There it has a bit that says, if you like this, please cite it. Um, and Image J, PG, and all of these also have citations, as do most of the packages that we will have used throughout the week. If you're, uh, yeah, so at least you should be naming packages and version numbers in your methods. If you say we used Python and a site for image, that is not helpful because you might have used a new version, an old version, you might have used a function that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so please put version numbers, but also, if they give you a citation that you can use, please cite them. Because actually, half of these guys are, are researchers at universities. Uh, Kragish, Tomanak, uh, they're the ones I know mostly. But you get like Anne Carpenter, the cell profiler, and things like this. And we all know that although we're not in a metrics based career track, it's a metrics based career track, and citations are important. And that leads to funding for these people to develop the next generation, which might have that feature you really wish it had. So big plug for citing software and packages where you, where you can. If someone's not put, if, if you find a package on GitHub and they've not put a paper related to it up, or they've not told you how they would like it cited, and you're putting a paper and, and it heavily relies on that, please contact them. Make a GitHub issue saying, how do I cite this? And they'll probably reply with, oh, just cite the website, or just cite, just use the name and the version number, or, oh, there's actually a paper I keep meaning to put up. And it's an important way to support the developers and to support the whole community. And uh, yeah, round over. OK, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for the bad audio quality in some places. I think I had the recorder in my pocket as I walked about. Bye.